This is a historical moment in South Carolina. Thank you for joining us here today. It was 1995. Governor McMaster was chair of the Republican Party in South Carolina. The South Carolina House, we got the majority as Republicans in 95. And since 1995, Governor, we have cut $54 billion in taxes. $3 billion just this year alone. Well, now's not the time to stop. Now is the time to kick it into higher gear. You've seen what the BEA has done today with new revenues in South Carolina. That's because of leadership, Governor. Thank you. Thank you for being the partner of this South Carolina House, Speaker Lucas, Chairman Smith, to make things happen. So it's time to invest back in the people of South Carolina with a tax cut. The Governor asked for this tax cut in his executive budget, and Governor, and we're here to deliver. So we want to join you in helping propel South Carolina further and faster than we've ever been before by sending that money right back to these great taxpayers. Please join me in welcoming Chairman Smith to talk about the details. historic day for us and so one thing that we're asked all the time is why are we doing this now and I think it's important that we're doing it now because South Carolina's economy is on the right track it is red hot right now also we're one of the fastest growing states in the in the Union you see people are moving here and it's all because of the sound fiscal policy that we've enacted over these past 25 years and so today's the day that we're going to try to come out and finally achieve some tax reduction for South Carolina citizens. And so what does it look like? Let me tell you, we're going to adopt the governor's plan, which was a wonderful plan, because the first thing that we're all concerned about is not raising taxes on South Carolinians. And so the only way that we can figure out how to do that is by reducing the top uh, marginal rate from 7% to 6%. And so with the announcement of the BEA today in excess of $600 million, we're going to go ahead and take a huge chunk of it out today, and we're going to take a large bite of that, of that apple today, and we're going to reduce it to 6.5%. That's going to be $600 million that is going to be directed directly to relief and return to the taxpayers of this state. And we're not going to stop there. We're going to go all the way to 6%. And that is going to be uh, over a billion dollar tax cut. So what we're doing here today is announcing a billion dollar income tax cut to the, South, to the citizens of this state. And so with that, with that, we're going to have an effective tax rate at that point of 2.34% uh, of effective tax rate. So South Carolina is going to have one of the lowest effective tax rates in the state. Right now we're at 3.1%, which is a tenth lowest in the nation. And so we're going to take a further step, and we look forward to enacting this. This will pass with the budget. We will see a bill coming through committee on Thursday that enacts your, adopts your recommendations, Governor. And we look forward to working with you, Lieutenant Governor, and looking with, forward to working with the Republican Caucus and members of the House to enact this historic event. So uh, with that, I'll be happy to turn it over to the Speaker, and we'll welcome the Speaker of the House, Jay Lucas. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Governor, for, for continuing to lead our party in positive directions and lead our state. Um, I have some statistics that I think bear repeating. I, I repeated them the other night, but um, for members of this caucus who are um, as much a part of these statistics, I think we need to talk about them just a little bit. As Governor McMaster shared in his State of State address, South Carolina added $4.3 billion in capital investment last year and 15,000 jobs. That is outstanding considering where we were in the pandemic. Our state's gross domestic product increased 10% during the pandemic and 26% over the last five years. We are indeed a state on the come. Our, st our unemployment rate in this state, although it went to 5.6% of the Governor McMaster and the House Republican Caucus's leadership, it's fallen to 3.7%. We are the 10th fastest growing state in America. It is a basic Republican principle that we keep taxes low, and I believe that when there's a surplus of money flowing into our coffers, it needs to be returned to the people. You know, 16 states cut income taxes last year. 
And they did it primarily out of frustration. Frustration with our federal government, with our national government, as they continue to see our debts rise, our taxes rise at that level. People are turning to us at the state level for income tax relief. Of those 16 states, 12 have Republican governors in the state house, and many of those surrounded us in the southeast. Our current rate makes South Carolina, unfortunately, less competitive for new jobs and capital investment. Governor McMaster has pushed for this last tax cut over the last three years. I believe the plan laid out by Chairman Smith, with the help of so many of those behind me, is the best way to provide the deserved relief, relief, excuse me, relief to all South Carolinians. A tax cut has the impact, Mr. Simmel, of a pay rate. And more money in the pockets of our people to spend is a catalyst for even more economic growth in South Carolina. We are in a unique situation this year where we have the opportunity to provide tax relief to every South Carolinian while still maintaining the economic success we have experienced in the past. Now is the time for tax relief, and now is also the time for me to introduce, I believe, the most popular Republican governor in America, Governor Henry Darden McMaster. Governor McMaster. faces except on the security people standing there. <laughs> Everybody's smiling and I am confident that when this news breaks there'll be millions of smiling faces all over South Carolina. This is it's been said this is a this is a pay raise to everybody who's, who's working for it. And it goes all the way down. It's not just on the top. 7%, it goes all the way down, and that's the way, that's the way it ought to be, because everybody is, is paying these taxes. We've learned from history, we like to learn from history, sometimes we don't learn, but the lessons of history are that when you reduce the taxes on the people, what happens? They keep their money, they invest their money, some save their money, which allows it to be lent out to others who need money. More money is circulating, the velocity of money speeds up, and the economy goes up. And you end up with more people working and paying taxes all over the lower rate, and more money comes into the government. I want to salute all of those here and others that have worked so hard for our conservative, smart, innovative government in South Carolina. We, we've kept the taxes, we need to keep the taxes low. We've taken them lower before. We're taking them lower now, and this is the first step it's going to go more, it needs to go farther down, but we're doing this right now, right now, is cutting the, these taxes. And we know that when we do this, that there will be ramifications of the implications all across our, our society. Uh, I will be very interested to see who those are who are not in favor of a tax cut. And maybe we can uh, ask them to, to raise their hands at, at, at some point. But this is a this is a step forward. This is something that, that many of us have worked towards for a number of years, and it is is very it's great to see the kind of communication, collaboration, cooperation, and partnership between the executive branch and the the, the house, the, the leadership, and the the house itself. Uh, we have supporters in the Senate as well. We know that there are some there who are interested in cutting taxes as well, and we welcome them on board. But th this, is, this is going to happen, and it will start an avalanche of change and prosperity unlike anything we've seen. We're in a position now because of the right kind of leadership we've had in our state is conservative, and our response to the virus was conservative, it was smart, and while other states are having to dig out and they're in deep trouble, we're blasting off. This just adds one more reason for South Carolina's great success in the, in the future. And this is not a swap, or a shift, or a switch. This is a tax reduction. We're not re lowering one and raising another. Some states do that. Some people think in that way. We're not doing that. We are lowering taxes on the people of South Carolina. And I predict it will have enormous positive impact across all across our state. So I want to thank these leaders here and others around the state who have seen the need in our state 
for reducing taxes on our people. The people are happy when they're keeping their money and they're able to find work and jobs. And this is a great step, a first step, but a great step in that direction. So thank you, everyone. If anyone has any questions for anyone here, we'll be glad to have them. Um, yes, actually. Senior correspondent. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So Mr. Rainwater made clear today that what was certified is largely a surge, partly because of all the federal spending. What happened? Partly because. And so what happens when it's, when he says it gets back to a normal trend in 2023? Yeah, the norm, the normal set. trend is going to be increasing. We are, we are confident. We are on the way up. We, the, the federal money did help, but the conservative policies that we had in, in this state are, are what have allowed this, this to occur. And we, we have businesses from all over the world that are contacting us that want to, want to come to South Carolina. We have businesses in the state that want to grow. We have a lot of needs in education and other things, but this is the way to answer those needs. This, this will, un a tax cut unleashes industry and business and the economy to thrive. And I predict that we will, we will see, that even Mr. Rainwater will be surprised <laughs> at how much more money is going to be coming in and how much we will grow. Uh, you said you have support in the Senate, but I can't help but notice there are no senators in this room. They're busy. <laughs> <laughs> were, perhaps they're in, were they invited and did not come? Well, we, we invited everybody. We had to turn people away. <laughs> 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 Next question. Governor, you mentioned, you know, opponents raise their hand, let me know what you think. Well, if, if I have to think of anything, there may be some people that are like, well, we need to do a comprehensive look at all taxes, property taxes, income taxes. Yeah. Is that something that you can do this year? Is that something that you promised to do the years in the future? Is, is don't, let the, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. You have to take them a bite at a time, and this is a big, major, significant, highly significant step forward highly significant. It's been talked about, it's been promoted for years. We've had visitors that are experts on the economy that uh, have seen economies around the world and what makes them flourish and here in, in this country as well. And reducing taxes on the people is the key ingredient. And this is a big step, a big step. I can't, can't overestimate how important it is. And it's, it's not the only one. We'll see the results, we'll see the impact of this, and I predict there'll be more more emphasis on doing it again soon. More questions? Are there anything else? Actually, I have a technical question. What is the phased in questions. approach? You said 600 million the first year, you get to a billion the second year? Or what what It'd exactly be is the plan? Five year phase in. Okay. And the one other thing, I didn't have my reader alone, so I couldn't see my notes too well, but uh, the one other thing is, as you know, we have a progressive tax bracket in South Carolina. We start at 3% and go up 7%. So what we're going to do here is create two tax brackets, a 3% and a 6% uh, tax bracket. So you're going to see that immediately simplify the tax code by having just two uh, rates rather than having six rates or five rates. But it would be $600 million in year one. $600 million, about $600 million in year one. We're going to include the military tax exemption, which is about $8 million, so that will be total around $600 million plus or minus so. More questions? Mr. Speaker, anything? Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you.